Well, a very blessed and holy Lent to all of you. We have entered into this holy season with our ashes on Wednesday, and we heard this prayer on the Ash Wednesday Mass. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take a battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. That's a, an oxymoron, it's a paradox. Weapons are not means of self-restraint. A machine gun, a sword, is not something that people use to restrain themselves. It's, they're, they're, they're instruments of willpower. And so the paradox of Christianity here is the very weapons we use to draw closer to God and to his mystical body, the church, are self-restraint. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Giving away something of ourselves. Putting our own will behind the will of our Heavenly Father. We have entered into the service of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we face three spiritual evils. The first evil, the, the, the flesh, the world, the devil. The first of those evils, of those enemies, is the one we see in the mirror every morning. Ourselves, our own frail flesh. You know, you look in the mirror and you say, wow, I've got to face the day with this. With all of my weaknesses and limitations. Later in the day we face enemy number two on the streets. Everyone else. You ever been on a crowded freeway and you say, everyone else, every other car is my enemy between me and my goal. But the secular world is our second enemy. The, the, the third enemy we might face very much later that day, maybe late at night. Some people feel distressed and discouraged. Some people feel the demon comes to them in the middle of the night. They wake up worrying about things. But that's the third, Satan himself. And we face all three of these every day. The world, the flesh, and the devil made God give us the victory. But he gives us three spiritual weapons that we heard on Ash Wednesday in the Gospel. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Remember those three we heard on Ash Wednesday? When you pray, the Lord said. When you fast, when you give alms. All three of these work together. All three of them are necessary for effective Christian witness. Prayer is the beginning and the heart of Lent. Now, I think we have a couple of these uh, we gave out on Ash Wednesday. If you didn't get this little book, Lenten Gospel Reflections by Bishop Barron, there, there's, there's a couple at the doors, and Mariella, they're not out. Get all of them out to the shelves. And you might be able to find one, but more prayer, deeper prayer. And, and for this, we have the daily Gospel readings, daily Mass, if you can. But prayer without fasting can become just mere sentimentality. We need, the, we need to feel the, the, the open wound of God's love in our flesh by fasting with him if prayer is to have any real significance. On the other hand, fasting without prayer would simply be an assertion of willpower. The Lord Jesus went into the desert to fast depending entirely on his heavenly Father's strength. And finally, almsgiving proves that prayer and fasting are not just self-absorbed religious fantasies, that we go beyond ourselves to help others. Giving alms proves that I love someone outside of myself. This Sunday is AAA Sunday, the Archdiocese and Annual Appeal. I'm going to talk about almsgiving because this is the one Sunday of the year when we support the Archbishop and the Archdiocese. I'm going to ask our, we're going to see a little movie. Once a year we see a movie at Mass, and this is the Archdiocese and Appeal movie, and I ask our sacristan, Ed, to roll up the screen. We'll see if he can do it without pinching his fingers. And also the ushers, if you could pass out the AAA brochures 
They look like this, pretty pictures inside of them. So ushers pass those out. I'm gonna go through those in a minute. Nice picture of St. Anne's Church on the cover. But almsgiving, we have to give alms. We have to share some of the goods that God gives us to be truly human, to be truly Christian. So we might as well give some of them to our Archbishop beyond the parish to the wider three county Archdiocese of San Francisco. I do not apologize for asking you for alms this Sunday to help the Archdiocese meet its goals of bringing the gospel in so many ways. Our parish goal is $84,000 this year. We are afraid at times to give alms. We're afraid to give a little bit of our security away the way we are afraid of fasting. But God will never be outdone in generosity. Everything we have, everything we are comes from him. All of the money we have is his. The strength that he's given us to earn the money, to eat the food we do, is from him. And so do not be afraid to deny yourself some food and fasting, deny yourself some of the use of your money by giving it to others. From the readings today, before we see our little movie, the serpent in Genesis plants doubt in Eve's heart. Doubt of God's providence. Did God really tell you not to eat that fruit? In other words, can you trust him? Because if you don't eat that fruit, you won't have enough food. You need to assert your own will to get along in life. The devil outrageously lies because it is God himself that has given us everything and will provide us for everything. Has he ever failed to provide us with what we need? Why do we listen to the doubts sown in our hearts and minds by the devil? The serpent says, surely you will not die. I gotta tell you, Everyone in this church is going to die. No one gets out of this church alive. The way out of eternal death is to trust God. The serpent says, we, you will be like gods. Yes, will we, be, we will be like gods if we trust and obey the Lord. The same devil appears to Christ in the desert after his 40-day fast. At his weakest. That's when old Blackie comes to us and we're weakest. The exorcists call him hairy legs. He comes to us when we're debilitated. He says, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, trying to plant a doubt in the son of God's mind, a vain exercise. See how he's letting you go hungry, the devil says to Jesus. He can't be your father. No father would allow you to go hungry, would expect you to do what he's asking you to do. Jesus' response, unlike... Eve's and Adam's is to trust. My food is to do the will of him who sent me, the Lord will say. And that's what we must say too. More important than anything else in this world is to do the will of the Father. But it was only Jesus' fasting that allowed him, that weakened his own human will enough to see clearly that the only thing I can hope in in life is the will of God. That's my food. That's what fasting does for us. Finally, in the second reading, St. Paul uses the word gift five times. The gift is not like the transgression. God gave Adam the gift of paradise. Adam and Eve distrusted him and lost the gift. But he gave another gift, his own son. And by this gift, the many will be made righteous. They will live forever. Gifts are continually poured into our laps from God, our Heavenly Father, by divine providence. Gifts are made by definition to be given away, to be shared.